This is a month of thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, thy kingdom. I can't hear you now. Say, neighbor, thy kingdom is coming for you. Say, the kingdom, the kingdom of our God is coming for you. All right, go a step further in faith and say, neighbor, the kingdom has come for you. Or oh, declare again, say, the kingdom has come for you. Somebody shout it loud, amen. The Lord brought us a very awesome word last Sunday through his servant, Pastor K. And today I want to take us further because when you hear the kingdom come, it is important for you to understand what are the evidence, what tells me that the kingdom has truly come. So I'll be showing you today eight evidences that the kingdom has come. So that it is not just a theory in your mouth. That when you see this and you see that, you know that the kingdom has what? Has come. Now in church, there is what I may call, for lack of what, church language. Just like every, every sector has its language. When you go to the medical field, there is medical language. So sometimes you sit before a doctor, and the doctor is talking to you, and he's saying something. You say, look, just break it down to a layman term that I can understand. Am I talking to somebody here? In the legal field, there is legal language. So there is church language. There is what? I can't hear you now. There is what? And sometimes believers, are uh, they know the church language, but they don't know how it practically is. Uh, 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 broken down or available or applicable to their life. So, for example, the Lord has said to us, this is our month of thy kingdom come. Everyone knows that we are talking about the kingdom of God. You know the word. In fact, when you, you read the prayer of Jesus, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom what? Come. Thy kingdom come. We, you, you know that. But what is it like practically in your life? Because we understand that the kingdom here, we know we will go to the kingdom of God. But this one, Jesus is saying, call for the kingdom to do what? To come. So when, if the kingdom comes now, do you know it? Am I talking to somebody here? Maybe it has come. But how do you know? How do I know that the kingdom has come for me? How do you know that the kingdom has come for you? How many of you would like to know that? It's important. So that when you are declaring the kingdom come, you know the indices. Is it indices or the, the parameters or the indications that actually shows that the kingdom truly has come. And that's where I want to, and this is my first message on this subject in this month, that's where I want to begin from. So that as you are engaging in prayers, as you are engaging the team, you are looking out for some practical things. Some what? Practical things that shows you that of a truth, the kingdom has what? Has come. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10, the Bible says, your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that the kingdom is God's way. Just as we heard last week. He said the kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When the kingdom come, heaven is made manifest on earth. When the kingdom comes, heaven is what? Is made manifest on earth. In fact, you get a tester of what it is like in heaven. Here on earth. You have a rehearsal of heaven's glory. Here on earth. Am I talking to somebody here? So he said, the kingdom come. Thy will be done where? On earth. Just as what? As it is in heaven. Please understand here. That is very specific there. He's not just saying that your will be done on earth. Because you see, God can do his will on earth. But it may not be a replication of what is happening in heaven. Is somebody following me here? He said the will that we are asking to see here on earth, let it be the one that is experienced there in heaven. Thy will be done here on earth as it is what? In heaven. So give me a tester of heaven here on earth. Give me what? A tester of what? Heaven. Of heaven. Here on earth. Let me have an experience that resembles in some way what those who are already in heaven are enjoying. What the angels have access to. What they are experiencing daily, let me experience a measure of it here on earth. If you grew up in my home country that I originally came from, then you will understand this. When you go and you want to buy certain things, like for example, uh, granite, which we call peanut here, yeah? Or you want to buy, you, you, even when you go and buy what they call suya, yeah, you get a tester. Is that not so? It's okay. This man is selling a granite. It's not the one here they put on board everything locked up. So when you get home, before you know what you're buying, that one you uh, taste. Although some people over taste. <laughs> you taste, it's okay. Eh? It's nice. Okay, give me two cup. You see, you want to have a taster of what. You are buying. Am I talking to somebody here? We have heaven to go to. But God can give us a tester here. Before we get there. So I don't need to get there first. Before I know what it is like. I can experience a measure of it. Here on earth. Am I talking to somebody here? A measure of it here on it. So when I get there, I'm not a total stranger to the amenities and facilities and glory and pleasure and joy that is there. I am in some way used to it. Am I talking to somebody here? Can you imagine somebody who has never been to a mansion? Yeah? Grew up in a tash house. In a hut. Yeah? No chair to sit on. Sit on the floor. And then one day you just suddenly bring them into a mansion with, with uh, chairs, golden utensils and cutleries and everything. They will be afraid to sit down. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody here? They'll be standing. 
When you say sit down, they may even sit on the floor. You see that uh, carpet that you put, a uh, center carpet, what do they call it? Rock, center rock that you then put a, a table. It, at the best, they will go and sit on that one. You say, no, 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 sit on the chair. He said, are you sure? I'm sure that's why the chair is there. He does not know. He's not familiar with that. Whereas, a child that was raised in that atmosphere, he will even carry his leg and shoe and put on the chair. The difference, am I talking to somebody here? The difference is that one has had a tester. A tester. A tester. Kusha karate brote kataya. So when we call the kingdom come, we are positioning ourselves to experience a dimension of heaven here on earth. I pray for somebody here who is under the sound of my voice. And those of you connected from across the nations of the world and our churches as well where you are gathered. The kingdom is coming for you today. I said the kingdom is coming for you today. I said the kingdom is coming for you today. Somebody who received that, let me hear your loud amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God has his will, other wills that are not necessarily what is manifesting there. Do you understand? But the one that is happening there, let it happen for me here. Glory to God. Glory to God. So, so evidences that the kingdom has come without understanding. I want to read this. Romans chapter 14, 17 to 18. It says, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. It says, for he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Are you, are you following me? The kingdom. So, what is number one evidence that the kingdom has come for you? And I felt that's the best place to start. Number one, with that understanding that you have now, that the kingdom come, the will be done as it is in heaven, is having a measure of heaven here on earth. Experiencing it. Living in it. That's the core. And that would help you get every other thing that I'm dropping here very quickly. Number one, evidence is righteousness. Is what? Righteousness. The text I read said, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness. Righteousness. Do you know in heaven, they are not struggling with sin? They are not. There is no struggle with what? With sin. Righteousness, holiness is the culture of heaven. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not just a standard. Please understand. Because there's a difference between a standard and the culture. It is not just a standard because sometimes you set standard and people can meet it. A culture... On the other hand, it's a way of life. It's the normal thing. It's the norm. Am I, am I talking to somebody here? So righteousness is not just a standard in heaven. It's the culture. It's the culture of heaven. So when the scripture says the kingdom comes, Come, there will be dawn on earth as it is in heaven. And the same scripture tells us that the kingdom is righteousness. Is righteousness. It's telling you that the culture is right. So when a man has truly had the kingdom come for him, righteousness becomes his way of life. 
I have said that when the kingdom comes, there is a natural appetite for righteousness. There is what? A natural, a natural, a natural appetite. You just have an appetite. You know, there are people who are in church, who are, who, who are children of God, but they are just, they are struggling to live right. Is that not true? They are struggling to live. It's like, ah, Christianity. They will tell you, Christianity is not easy. It's hard. It's very hard. If not for this Christianity, I know what I will be doing. You see, they have an appetite for something else. It's like somebody is like there is a, a yoke on them. A chain that is preventing them. But really, what they want to do is this. But, but because of this Christianity, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It's a struggle. I want to be here. I want to be here, but this Christianity is putting me here. Ah, if not that there's hair fire, at least I would have gone to do this one a bit and still claim to be a Christian. That's the confusion we are having in the world today. Where people are now making everything, they want to water down because of their struggle. So you have all kinds of, all kinds of people say, oh, I'm this Christian, I'm that Christian. All kind of names. Gay Christian. Mother Christian. You see, they now add the sin to the Christian because it's a struggle. Lying Christian. Don't, they say, don't judge me. The Bible says, don't judge. Don't judge. Seducing Christian. Do you understand what I'm saying? Dress provocatively just to seduce People, but Christian. Do you understand what I'm saying? When after dress, you'll be afraid. The buttons in the dress, they are struggling with the breast. She said, Jesus, let it not bust. Let it not bust. <laughs> you'll be wondering, sir. Ah. So we will not dress, and then. Where is he? He'll be pulling. I said, don't pull now. It's not a skirt. It's a belt. So stop pulling it. It's, 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 do you understand what I'm talking about? It's a struggle. It's not, it has not become a culture. It, there's no appetite. The appetite of righteousness is not there. there. There is a fear. There's a fear of God that is there. There is a kind of fear that I don't want to go to hell. Uh, and I know that this thing has consequences. There is also the, the, the moral uh, 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 draw to, to identify as a Christian. But there is, there is, there is a pool Towards the world. That righteousness is not the culture. So when he says the kingdom come. He said let the will be done here on earth. As it is in heaven. He said that let my natural appetite. Huh, be towards righteousness. That I will hate sin the way God hates sin. You know the scripture says, it says be holy for the Lord your God is holy. Where the, the Lord your God is in heaven. The heaven is his throne. So when he says that we be done here, he says carry the same level of holiness that he carries. I said with the kingdom in you, you crave righteous living without any inducement. Without any inducement, you will be craving for righteous living. Without anybody pursuing you. Nobody inducing you. No. Nobody watching you. Your conscience is alive. Your spirit is alive to, 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 to righteousness. 
and hate some godliness. Am I talking to somebody here? Your wife don't need to monitor you. Your husband don't need to monitor you. Your parents don't need to monitor you. Huh? The monitor is inside you. Ah, can I say that again? The monitor, where is it? Inside you. Is judging you from within. Is telling you you can't do this. This is not right. I know it will bring you gain, but you can't do this. I know that will bring you pleasure, but you can't. It's judging you from within. From within. Without any inducement. When that begins to happen, you know that of a truth, the kingdom of God has come upon you. Lift your right hand. Say, oh Lord, let your kingdom come upon me. I can't hear you now. Say, oh Lord, please let your kingdom come upon me. Say, Father, let your kingdom come upon me. Somebody shout it loud, amen. Not all this one that they are pushing you, driving you, coercing you, and all of that inducing you. No, 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 no. It will be, the appetite will just be there. Think of Joseph. 17 years old boy. 17. Teenager. All his hormones huh, running riot at that stage. Do you understand? Does not really have a total control of himself naturally. Put in a situation where the beautiful wife of Potiphar is seducing him. He's already placed as, you know, a ruler in the house. The Bible says that, I, I don't know if you understand that scripture, but let me tell you something. I, I don't want to spend too much time there. The Bible says that Potiphar did not know how much he had. Yeah? That Joseph was the one, because he was the one in charge. Joseph knew the money that Potiphar had. Potiphar did not know how much he had. Now, let me tell you something. When a man is not aware of the state of his money, that man is not aware of the state of things in his house. Because if ask any man, the first thing that he is aware, even ask yourself, you ask yourself, eh? that at least you are aware of your financial state. Is that not so? You are aware. That's why if you, when you get home now, God forbid it will not happen in your house. If 10 pounds miss from that 100 pound you put on that table. You will know. As you enter, I said, this money was 100 pounds. Who took 10 pounds from you? You will summon everybody. <laughs> Say, it was 100 pounds that I put here. Is that not so? You know the state of your money. A man who has no knowledge of the state of his finance. Huh? We not be aware of the state of affairs in his house. Joseph was aware of that. So whatever he does with Potiphar's wife, Potiphar will not know. So when you hear Joseph speak, he didn't say, ah, Madam, if we do this thing, what if my master becomes aware? Mm, master will not be aware. He's not aware. He's busy with business outside. I'm even the one coordinating the finances. I'm the one that informs him that by now there is also millions. There's this. What I tell, and he has to take it. If I take a million from what he has, he will not know. You ask me whether is that possible? Very possible. I'm telling you now. Very possible. Young man was discussing with me one time in Nigeria. Oh, why did I call the country now? <laughs> okay, 
I won't call the state. <laughs> yeah. He said one time he, he was um, it was a particular state and there's a son to the governor of that state. He said, oh, let's go to Abuja to attend a, a party tonight. Now, so they said, ah, but we have to go and get clothes. They don't worry about that. You don't need to. We will get the clothes we wear when we get there. It's okay. So the boy said, let's just go to our house. Went to their house. So the boy went into a room. Opened a wardrobe. The wardrobe was filled with money. Pounds, dollars. That's why we don't call the state. <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's, his, it's not his money, it's his father's money. He just put hands there. Well, it's not his father's money. It's stolen money. <laughs> he just put his hand there and took. He doesn't even know how much he took. He said, ah, this you're taking your father. He said, he will not know. You know how much he is here. He will not know that anything left here. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says, so from there, they went straight to the airport. Complex. They got to Abuja, went to, you know, beauty. Everybody, just pick what you want to wear tonight. <laughs> that was the way Potiphar was. Although he did not steal his own. But when you take, he will not know. So Joseph was aware of that. But yet, Joseph did not compromise his stand. Because the kingdom was in him. He said, how can I do such a thing? Against my God. Against my God. Against the kingdom that I represent. I pray for you and I pray for my generation. I pray for this generation. That the appetite of righteousness will overwhelm you. We overwhelm you. We overwhelm you. If I hear your amen, let it happen now. We are living in a generation and in a time, an age, where people are saying it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. God does not look at those things. Suddenly, what God used to look at when we were children is not different from what he looks at now. Whereas the Bible says it's not a God that changes. Okay, by the time we are now old, if Christ tarries and we live and it's our children or our grandchildren, will what God be looking at also change? Huh? Because we are, we, are, we, are, we are expecting that the, the, the scriptures and the love of God, the, the laws of God and the writings of God, they should be evolving as human, human beings are changing into morons. The Bible says forever, O Lord, your word is settled. Man may change, but his word will not change. God's word will not change. His standards and ways are settled. So, number one evidence that the kingdom has come is that it's righteousness. A natural appetite for it. Number two is peace. Is what? Peace. How do I know, pastor, that the kingdom has come? Is that I will have what? Peace. 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 That you are just peaceful. Are you following me? There is an unexplainable peace. It is not because, it is not a peace that is induced by what is happening. Do you understand? There's just a peace in you. I'll show you an example. Jesus. The Bible says the boat was rocking. He was sleeping. In a boat that, you know, storm was pushing here and there. Do you understand? The Bible says water was filling the boat. He was sleeping at the bottom, so the water should touch him first. But he was still sleeping. So the Bible said they came to him and said, ah, what kind of sleep is this? Carest thou not that we perish. Jesus looked at them. He was, to them, he was abnormal. 
to him, they were abnormal. Because he was operating in the kingdom. And they were operating outside the kingdom. So he looked at them and said, Why are you of little faith? This is not how the kingdom looks. The kingdom does not panic. The kingdom does not panic. The kingdom is not anxious. The Bible says he looked at the storm and he said, peace be still. The kingdom is here. Hey, hey. I pray for somebody here. Let the kingdom peace invade your life. Let the kingdom peace invade your family. Let the kingdom peace invade your home. Let the kingdom peace invade your career. Let the kingdom peace invade your marriage. Let the kingdom peace invade your business. If I hear your amen, let it arrive for you now. Somebody shout it out, amen. I said peace is visibly or invisible is visibly evident. Wherever the kingdom of God exists. Peace is what? Is visibly evident. So when you see a man who carries the kingdom. Yeah? You see peace. You see what? Peace. Even when storms are raging. You see peace. You say, this guy is always, he's always calm. He's not tensed. He's not what? Tensed. No. No. When I speak of this peace, I'm speaking of both inner and outer peace. I've said inner and outer peace are products of the kingdom. Inner peace and what? Outer peace. There are some who will not speak outwardly, but inside. Their blood pressure is rising. Do you understand? Uh, am I talking to somebody here? Inside there is, they are anxious. It's just that they don't want to show it. I'm not, not that type. I'm talking of inside. The person is, is, is at peace. Yeah? And outside, you will also see it. Because when you see people who rage, raging husband, he doesn't have the kingdom. When the kingdom, you see, there's a reason why the Bible says don't be unequally yoked together with unbeliever. Because there are some things you cannot control in a human being. Only the kingdom can control it. Only God's kingdom in them can control it. So those of you who are here who feel that oh, because you are a very good woman that's why your husband is, is no there are some very, very good women that the husband is a bulldog. In fact, the more good she becomes, the more bulldogish he becomes. He lacks the kingdom. Am I talking to somebody here? <sighs> so it is the kingdom in him. Huh? that is making you look like a good woman. Because if the kingdom is not there, there's a behavior we behave. You yourself, you will surprise yourself. You will discover that there is, there is a bulldog in you. <laughs> that will be, uh, you don't know, a, a, your husband can make you look bad and your wife can make you look bad. Vice versa, I'm telling you. They will bring out of you the worst of you. That when you are finished acting, you'll be asking yourself, was, is that me? Is that me? Am I talking to somebody here? So you see, you know, relations that are working, this is that. So my, my wife is just so good. My husband is just so good. Thank God for the kingdom. Thank God for the kingdom. You can share testimony from here. Yeah, I say, you know, I prayed and, and the spirit. I know 
The other one I pray though. Kingdom. When the kingdom is at work, it will cool the person down. If I, it may be saying no today, I will show her, I will show her. Before the time of showing her, kingdom. <laughs> it will just... You, you think he's weak. He's not weak, oh. He's not. Don't mistake his kingdom regulation for weakness. It is the kingdom that is at work. And I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Let that peace enter you today. Let that peace enter you today. Let that peace enter you today. So how do I know that the kingdom has come? Number one, righteousness. Number two, peace. I become peaceful. A man of peace. A woman of peace. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's inner peace. And I'm speaking of peace in, in, in different dimensions. Peace in terms of disposition to things. You know, a peace that the situations around does not unsettle. But also being an agent of peace. Those who are raging, excusing it for well, I was angry. They lack the kingdom. Number three, joy. What? Joy. Joy. The kingdom transmits joy. So when the kingdom is in a man, he's joyful. Joyful. You can't have the kingdom and be a sadist. Always needing people to cheer you up. Say, I just need, you know, somebody to cheer me up. Every time they see you, you are, your face is post office face. Moody. Uh -uh. You don't transmit joy. Do you understand? He said, ah, are you okay? Say, nobody knows what is going on with me. The only God knows where I'm surviving. You are not the only one surviving. Even the person who is asking you, if they tell you their problem, you will find that it's bigger than your own. You will begin to cry for them. Do you understand what I'm saying? But you're just, you lack joy. The Bible speaks of, he said, he calls it joy unspeakable. Full of glory. Joy unspeakable. It is not a joy that is coming from property. It's not coming from degree. It's not coming from promotion. It's not coming from things. It's just joy. 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 You see, for those who lack joy, you think, well, you know, because we've been in this country, we have been renting for over 30 years, and never, and if God can just give me my own property, I will be joyful. If they give you that property, eh, you'll be happy for one week. One week. By the second week, you will return to default mode. Default mode of sadness. Because eh? it's, ah, I don't know. Can you imagine now? My boiler just broke. You, now start coming. I did all this home insurance. Why are they? You will just start complaining. You, ah, baptism of complaining. Chief complainant, United Kingdom. <laughs> Dot com. <laughs> it's a rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. They find their joy in the Lord. And the Bible calls it the joy of the Lord. It's my strength. That's where they find it. That's where they find it. And the people look at you say, ah, with all these things happening to you, how you, how you, how you do it? Like, you're always joyful. Ah, I don't know if I can handle these things. So, it's the joy of the Lord. It's an evidence of the kingdom. The kingdom has come. The kingdom is at work in me. So I don't measure my life by possession or lack of possession. By what I own or what I don't own. I measure it by the God content that I have in me. 
the God content that I have in me is giving me joy. Is giving me joy. Stop measuring your life by things. Stop measuring your life by things. You will never be satisfied. Because the one that has A wants B. Am I, telling, am I talking to somebody here? The one who has one room wants three. The one who has three wants seven. Don't measure your life by things. Don't measure it by where people are. Everybody's on their own journey. God may never give you five bedroom until you leave this earth. It should not make you joyless. Maybe you don't need five bedroom. Am I talking to somebody here? Rejoice in the Lord. Find joy in him. Let the king. How many bedrooms did the disciples have? Jesus said, he said, the son of man does not even have a place to lay his head. Yet he was joyful. Oh my God. Stop putting yourself under pressure. And then you become a high blood pressure patient. Hypertensive patient. They are measuring your blood night and day. Swallowing tablets that are giving you side effect. Because you are running a race. Pursuing things that you are going to live here. One day. And by the time you drop other people who don't know what it took you to gather them. They will waste them. Waste them. And yet you have killed yourself. You have finished yourself. You lived miserably. You lack joy. Your face squeezed. We look at your pictures and we are looking for the one where you smiled to be able to print poster. What kind of nonsense is that? Yeah, say, don't use that one. Let's look for, at least we'll find one where he's smiling to put in the program. That devil is a liar. I bind that devil. Get out in the name of Jesus. You've got joy in you. Somebody say, I've got joy. Get smiling. Book a photo shoot and make sure you smile in all the pictures. So when we need a picture of you, we have good ones to use. Devil is a liar. They are planning your birthday, planning your party. They want to surprise you. They can't see a good picture to use. This one is squeezing. That one is squeezing. That is squeezing. Book a photo shoot. Man. Take good pictures. <laughs> the kingdom has come. So number three is joy. I've said if joy in the Holy Spirit is absent, know that the kingdom of God is not there. If joy, not joy in things, joy in the Holy Spirit, if it's absent, know that the kingdom of God is what? It's not there. It's not there. It's not there. Number four, evidence of the kingdom of God being there is the spirit of God. The spirit of God. Matthew chapter 12 verse 28. The Bible says. But if I cast out demons. By the spirit of God. He says surely. The kingdom of God has come upon you. He says so. It is not that. Listen to what he's saying. He's not saying that. The kingdom of God has come. Because I cast out demon. No. It is because. I casted it out by what? The spirit of God. If the spirit of God was there. Because if you go and study that chapter. You discover that it is also possible to cast out the demon by demon. Because the people said he is casting out demon by Beelzebub. Because when a superior demon comes. And wants to vacate the junior demon. The junior demon will vacate. He said, Pastor, what are you talking about? Let me explain to you. There are some cases where some people go to some voodoo priest to do certain things for them, to change some things. When they get there, huh? the voodoo priest, when he inquire of the matter, he will say, ah, no, this one, I can't go because the spirit that the person went to, to do this, is higher than me. If I put myself, 
I will endanger myself. Is that making sense to anybody? So, sir, you are going to find, sir, but is there nothing that we say, no, you want to put me in trouble? Yeah? So, they can cast out demon by demon. Even the people said, ah, he's casting out demons by Beelzebub. So, Jesus said, no, I'm not. Yeah? Then he said, but if I do it by the spirit of God, the same casting, but spirit of God. He said, then you will know that the kingdom has come. So, an evidence of the kingdom is that the spirit of God is present. An evidence that the kingdom of God is present is the spirit of God is made manifest. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it. Now, when we talk of the spirit of God being made manifest, let me explain it to you again because you know church language. I want you to understand this thing practical. Because they say, oh, the spirit of God is manifest. And we say, oh, yeah, the spirit of God is manifested in me because they were shaking, shaking, shaking. No, no, no. It's not shaking, no. You can shake, you can fall, you can break the chairs in the church. Thank God that this is our chair. You cannot easily break it. <laughs> you may end up breaking yourself if you fall on these chairs. Huh? And yet the spirit of God is not yet. Let me show you what the spirit is. The manifestation, rather, of the spirit of God is not necessarily tongue-talking. It is the display of the fruits of the spirit. That's re that, the display of the fruits of the spirit. What are these fruits of the spirit? In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, I'll list them for you. He said, but the fruit of the spirit is love. Is what? Is love. Is joy. Is peace. Is long suffering. Is kindness. Is goodness. Is gentleness. Is self control. He said against such. I'm already in verse 23. He said against such there is no law. Huh? So when the kingdom of God has come. For somebody. They have self control. There's kindness. Kindness. They are not like glue. Some people are like glue. Aradite glue. To get anything out of them. They have all the excuses in the world. Why they cannot do something. You need a plier to open their hand. Yes. They cannot help. There's always a reason. Let me tell you this. Those who help, it's not that they lack a reason why they can't do it. People don't give because they have surplus. No, never think that. That maybe because they just have money somewhere that they don't have something to do with it. Spare money. No, 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 no. It's just the kindness of their heart. They have something to do. They have fees to pay. They have bills to pay. They have expenditures that are waiting for them. Even the people that you think are rich. Because you see, the higher you go, the bigger the responsibility. I know what I'm talking about. Because I've made a journey from ground up. The higher you go, you're getting blessed. The bigger the responsibility. You know, as I'm standing here, I'm in people's fees. Um, I, I'm paying rents and all kinds of things. The higher you go. So it's not for the lack of things. So when you see people are making excuses, eh, you know, I would have wanted to, but because of it, they make excuses year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year six. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Is somebody getting something from this message? The, when the kingdom is at work in you, the manifestation of these fruits will be there. Kindness. Gentleness. Gentleness. Not the ones you want to, they will be pinching you to hold you back. Ah, stop now, dear. Say, no, no, no. You know that I speak my mind. Speak my mind. Your wife is trying to calm you down. 
you lack the kingdom. <laughs> well, I'm saying your wife. Sometimes it's the husband trying to calm the woman. It's true. Say, no, I can't take that nonsense. Da, 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 da. Everybody takes nonsense. If you can't take nonsense, you can't live with people. Because everybody gives nonsense. Even you that can't take nonsense. You also have the nonsense you give. When the spirit is manifested in you, you'll be, you'll be, you'll be amazed. You will have kindness. You will have long suffering. You have gentleness. You have self-control. Self-control. Not everything they just put there, you just eat, eat, eat. Before you eat something that will kill you, you don't even know. It's true. So people just eat. Driven by food. The Bible says, the Bible says, eh? he said, when you go to a feast, he says, you call your drink, he said, ah, eat small thing at home before so that you are not. Lots of people, they go and be carrying food. Eh? They, they say, serve yourself. They will put, the plate is overflowing. That's why he said, food more, food more. Food more. Ah. Then some we people have not eaten, you know, they carry cooler and be serving to go and be dropping in their car. You lack the kingdom. No self-control. They finish the food. The, peop the people who are serving are helpless. I'm trying to help you understand the kingdom. <laughs> we contain us. Then they'll be looking for the food. Ah, but we get out for social number of people. Where's the food? He says, oh, the, ah. that's why when you are doing occasion, put somebody who has power <laughs> by the food. Otherwise, you bouncer. Don't just put bouncer at the gate. Put bouncer also by the food. Because there are some people, they come there, they take the food. You will not have enough food to feed. And it will look as if you, who is holding the occasion, you did not provide enough food. Hiding food, hoard the food, give you a bad name. As if they don't have food at home. If you don't have food, come to our welfare. We will give you food. Don't carry people's Location food. <laughs> Glory to God. So there are many tongue-talking people who lack the kingdom of God. May you not be one of them. Yeah, there are people who speak in tongues, but they lack the kingdom. Kingdom is not in them. Alright, number five. Evidence of the kingdom is healing. Are you getting something? Because, see, I don't you just speak church language and you, so that you go back, you examine yourself. Is the kingdom in, maybe it's in you in some area, but in some of these areas, it's not there. Then you know you don't have the fullness of the kingdom. There's something called the fullness of the kingdom. You need it. Number five is what? Healing. Healing. I'll show you in scripture. Luke chapter 10, verse 9. The Bible says, and what? And heal the sick there. This is Jesus when he said them. He said, heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. You see it? When you heal the sick and they say, what has just happened? You tell them that the kingdom of God has come near to you. So where the kingdom is, there's healing. There's what? I can't hear you. There's what? Healing. There is healing. When the kingdom comes, healing comes. We shared a testimony this week. A young man wrote to us uh, late last year from Tanzania. He said he's a 27 years old young man. Yeah? He went and slept with a lady and discovered that she's HIV positive. And he was infected and the, he was beginning to even see the manifest the symptoms of the ill health and wrote to us on our prayer platform late last year. 
In fact, he was saying that his life is finished. He's even contemplating suicide and all that, 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 that. So I said, you want to jump from fire pan to fire? First of all, why do you go and sleep with a HIV woman or anybody? I said, if you think hungry, you marry. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. Oh, it's not just my word. That is what the Bible says. Paul the Apostle. That's what he said. Yes, he said, instead of burning within you, eh, that you now get into sin, he says, it's better for you to do what? Marry. Do you understand? He's a young man. It's not as if he's a lady. Say, okay, well, if the husband was there, my young man, go and speak to the ladies. You, you will find one. If this one say no, you go to the next one. Go to the, before you finish. It's true. You find one. Yeah. You know how many, how many times uh, men are rejected? Ladies cannot stand the rejections that men stand. Is it truth? I'm telling you. This is a lady, if they, well, this is not marriage seminar. <laughs> Should I talk a little? <laughs> is it truth? If a lady is rejected once, it hits hard. Do you understand? But a guy, a guy can reject it, dust it off, move. <laughs> rejected, dust it off, move. It's true. Even in homes that are already married, husband and wife, you know how many times some wife reject their husband? I'm tired. Uh, not today. Next week. Headache. Eh? But the day she won't, if the man say not today, say, ah, what is wrong with me? He's not attracted to me anymore. The Lord forgive you your iniquities. <laughs> Let me go back to my message. <laughs> See, no, it's true. So, men can handle rejection more than women. So this young man, we prayed for him. I said to him, okay, he said he's ready to serve Christ. And it was all as I was reading the thing. So I led him, I said, okay, if you are watching, give your life to God. Don't commit suicide. God is going to heal you, but don't go back to that sin. We prayed for him. This week, we shared his testimony that he sent to us a few weeks ago. He's done test. If I sent us the test kit, yeah? HIV positive, not HIV negative. That's how you know that the kingdom has come. Jesus said, heal the sick and say to them huh? that the kingdom has come near you. <laughs> I've said when the kingdom comes, sickness loses its power. It loses its hold on men. When the kingdom comes, sickness loses its hold on men. It loses its power, loses its grip on people. Healing is made easy by the presence of the kingdom. I'm telling you, and I, I'll just give you a quick illustration so you get that. Healing is made what? Easy. By what? By the presence of the kingdom. There are some people now if they really want to be healed, all they need to do is to forgive. You see those, those things I read out of the, of the fruits of the spirit? Yeah? If they can just imbibe them, that cancer will die. Healing is made easy when the kingdom is present. You know, some people say, ah, no, you don't know what he did to me, pastor. I can never forgive. Over my dead body, my heart is grieving. My heart is grieving. They start quoting uh, King James Version English. Grieving. Grievous thou not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. You want healing? That the kingdom brings? Imbibe the kingdom. When that culture is at work in you, sickness will be destroyed. 
I've said the kingdom is the driving force for the healing ministry. It's true. The kingdom is the driving force for the, king, for the healing ministry. That's why you never see a man who has no genuine love and compassion for people operating in the healing ministry. One of the secrets of healing ministers, I know this because I, by the grace of God, I don't need to tell you, you have seen miracles happen through these hands, through this mouth, is the love and compassion for people. And love is a fruit of the spirit. And we have said that that is an evidence of the kingdom. So it is, it is the kingdom is a driving force, a driving force for the healing ministry. So you see healings. That's why all of you listening to me here today, whatever the sickness is, whether you're here or you're online, connected anywhere, in the name of Jesus, I cause the infirmity out of your body in the name of Jesus. Whatever the sickness is, is gone. Oh my God, I said it's gone. I said it's gone. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Number six, the poor are raised to royalty and prosperity. That's an evidence of the kingdom. The poor are raised to royalty and prosperity. I'll just give you the other uh, ones and then I will stop. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 14 says, For he comes out of prison to be king, although he was born poor in his kingdom. He comes out of prison. To what? To be king. Although he was what? Born poor in his kingdom. So the kingdom can move you from poverty to royalty, to prosperity. That's an evidence of the kingdom. Number seven, quickly, an evidence of the kingdom is the finger of God. What did I call it? The finger of God. There are people, you see them, and you know the finger of God is upon this life. You understand what I'm talking about? I wish I don't have time to explain this last one, so just take them down. Luke 11 verse 20 says, But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Now, the finger of God, I can preach an entire message on that. The finger of God. <laughs> Number eight. Accusers and accusations are cast down. What did I call it? Accusers. And what? And accusations are cast down. When accusations and accusers are cast down, you know that the kingdom of God has come for you. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 says, Then I heard the last voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and what? And the kingdom of God and the power of his Christ have come. Yeah? How do you know that it has come? It says, For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been what? Cast down. When the kingdom of God comes for you, your accusers and accusations cast down. It will not be you fighting your battle. Whatever accusation they raise against you, the kingdom will bring it down. The kingdom will bring it down. Because you know sometimes people can raise accusations against you for things you did not do. And every because our world has the propensity to believe falsehood more than they have to believe truth. Yeah? That's why you have people speaking parable. They say eh, there's no there's no smoke without uh, fire. Even the people you thought were your friends. And there must be something, you know. This couldn't have just come out from any nowhere. Accusations. People conspiring, cooking up things just to put a bad label on you. You can clear your name, but before you will clear your name, the, the bad name has traveled far. When your name has not been cleared, the clearance will not travel as far. As the evil uh, labor place on you traveled. Am I talking to somebody here? 
He wouldn't. They say, it's okay, it's okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we will not do it all because the thing has traveled to Japan, Singapore. People are made for, especially these days of social media, WhatsApp and everything. I'm, if they say, okay, I'll upload you, I'm sorry. It will still not travel. The I'm sorry will not go viral. Whereas the accusation, the evil label, we spread. May that not be your case. I pray for you today that for you the kingdom will truly come. Ah, he said because the kingdom come. He said the accuser. The accu I pray every accusation in your workplace, in the community, in Ayakasha, Gabarato, Kotaya, those that accuse you spiritually, physically, Ayakasha, Dakrata, let it crumble in the name of Jesus. Please rise to your feet. The kingdom has come. So when we say the kingdom come, you know what we are talking about now. Don't you? You know what to be looking at for. You check. You check. You check. You check. I felt it was important for me to start from here. So that as things are unfolding, you know. Because when expectations are not known. You settle for anything. Do you understand? It's like a man who boards a bus and does not know his destination. Yeah? Anywhere the bus stops will become his destination. He will come down. In fact, when he sees a lot of people coming down. Think about when you first arrive in this country. Those of you who came from abroad. Yeah? And you enter bus. London bus. If it gets to a bus stop where a lot of people are coming down, your heart will start. Yeah, this, maybe this is the place. Maybe this. You're going to be asking the driver. The driver will say, I said I will tell you when we get there. Uh, do you understand? Yeah, the driver said, I told you, no, this is not. Be why are you? Because a lot of people are coming down there. Because all the buildings look alike to you. So if somebody is trying to describe to you, he say everything, everything looks alike. Whether you are in uh, Croydon, or you are in Peckham, or you are in uh, Tottenham, or you are in Oxford, every, everything is like, all the buildings are similar. All the road. If I, you'll be asking me, how do you people know road here? <laughs> nah, nah. When they just say, oh, just send me the postcode. Just send me the postcode. I will find my way there. I'll find my way there. Don't forget where you are coming from. You used to be JJC. We know. We are aware. Glory to God. You ready to pray? You're going to pray and say, Lord, let the kingdom come for me. You see, what I'd like you to do as you pray this prayer, there are some of the areas, some of the evidence that you know, this one is lacking you know, in my life. You see, you can deceive everybody. You can't deceive yourself. Yeah? So tell yourself the truth. If you think, you can even move a little from the person you are standing close to. So if you don't want them to hear the prayer, that you, want to, you don't have to shout. It's you and God. What is important for you is that the kingdom must come. You pray, Lord, let the kingdom come. Let the kingdom peace enter me. Let the kingdom joy. Let the, let the righteousness of the kingdom this one that I'm always sickly. Let the healing of the kingdom, let the kingdom truly come for me. It, oh, I showed you everything from the scripture. He said, heal them. He said, then when they, uh, what has just happened? Somebody can just be healed like this without a doctor. He said, then you tell them the kingdom of God has come near you. Huh? That's it. The spirit of God, the finger of God. Accuser, every time I'm always accused. The people always, you know, point finger at me for evil, for bad things, things I didn't do. Lord, let the kingdom come. I will not carry a bad name. No. Are you ready to pray? It's not how loud you pray. It's not how quiet you pray. But it's that your heart is connected. Open your mouth and pray somebody. Ooh, my faith has found 
our rest in place. Keep praying before I pray for you. Not in device, nor creed. I trust the ever-living one. His wound for me sharply. I need no wrong the argument. I need no, no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. I need no wrong that argument I need no wrong no other plea it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me enough for me that Jesus said this Ends my fears and doubt. A sinful soul, I come to him. He will never make sure you're praying for yourself. Maybe you find that you don't have a natural appetite for righteousness. Say, Lord, give me, let me not be struggling to live a righteous life. Let, it, let this Christianity not be like a burden. Why am I having appetite for wrong things? Oh, it is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. I need no wrong the argument. I need no wrong, no other plea. Eat. Make sure you are praying for yourself. It's you. It's you and your God. Jesus died. And that he died for me. Enough for me. That Jesus saves. This ends my fears and doubt. A sinful soul. I come to him. He will never cast me out. I need no wrong the argument. I need no wrong, no other plea. It is saying that Jesus died and that he died for me. One more time. I need no other argument. I need no wrong, no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died. That sickness cannot stay anymore. The kingdom has come. The kingdom has come. I see high blood pressure leaving somebody. I see insanity being flushed out of somebody. The kingdom has come. I see ovarian cyst being dissolved. I see hernia being dissolved. I see fibroid. Fibroid. The kingdom has come. Leave that body. I see fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia disappearing because the kingdom has come. I see strange weakness, strange pains leaving people because the kingdom has come. Hey, Karagata Balata, Eshataya, Erakopata, let it break out of you. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It is 
say enough that Jesus died and that he died for you. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Jesus will face it here today. He will face it here today. He will face it here today. We know he can. Jesus will face it here today. He will fix it here today. He will fix it here today. We know he will. Doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Oh, Jesus, we'll fix it here today. He will we'll fix it here today. Oh, he will fix it here today. We know he can. Oh, Jesus, we'll fix it here today. He will, he will fix it here today. He will fix it here today. We know He will. Lift your two hands. Hey! The Bible says, and the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our God. I was telling you about the fullness of the kingdom. So you may have some, but you know. The Bible says of the increase. So it increases until it, it, it comes to its fullness. That all these evidences are there. They are there. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Let the kingdom come for you now. Let the kingdom come for you now. Receive the kingdom in the name of Jesus. I stand here and I declare. By the mercies of God. In the name that's above every name. Shakaronamande. Whatever you need. As an evidence. Of the walkings of the kingdom. Let it arrive for you now. Let it arrive for you now. Let it arrive for you now. Receive it in the name of Jesus. That your life and family. Will become evidence. Testimonies. Of the kingdom. So shall it be. And so shall it be. In the name of Jesus. I want everyone to stay with me. Hello church and everyone. Stay with me. Open your eyes and look at me. Everybody. Please. As with the understanding you just got today. Yeah. Let your appetite. For the kingdom. Increase. Are you following me? Let it increase. You know, Jesus had one primary message. And that message was the kingdom of God has come. That was his message. It was in that message that people were healed. That the dead came out of the grave. It's about the kingdom. When we pray for miracles and they happen, it's not a show. We're not trying to demonstrate a show. No, it's the kingdom. These are the occurrences, the evidence. So you have to see it in your life. You have to see it. And I believe you will see it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now before we release our church in Hallow and um, although are connected, we are going to we have our prayer fest, it was announced last Sunday prayer fest is happening from the last Sunday of May we are already in April, 
the 26th of May to the 2nd of June. And one of the ways in which you connect to a meeting is to make yourself one of those who make the meeting happen. Very important. One of those who make the meeting happen. For us to put together a program like Prayer Fest, it costs us money. Uh, somebody told me recently, because we're looking for a facility in South London for church, and then when they quoted the price, the person I said, I was saying to him that, you know, what do you think? Because you're the one that went to see the place. He said, Pastor, that amount of money, he said, a lot of people don't know that it costs money. I said, if you look at money, you will not do the work. If you look at money, you will what? So sometimes you just but for the program to happen I believe that with all of us you and I and our brethren everyone in Halo and just around all of you both those of you are physically here and joining online if we can make the program happen the budget for that program if we go by the estimate of previous years will not cost us anything less than maybe around 15,000 pounds to make that program happen. And I want to encourage that everyone, you are part of those giving to finance that program. I want to pray this morning for those who indicated last week and those who will be indicating now. The pastor, I would want to give something for the financing of prayer first. Lift your right hand up. I'm going to pray for you. Those who already did that last week, also lift your hand. I'm going to pray for you. Lift your right hand. But here, those of you at home, if you're at home and you lift your hand also, you propose in your heart what you will give as the Lord gives you capacity to do. Some people can give in thousands. Some can give in hundreds. Some maybe just in tens. But as the Lord gives you grace. Lift your right hand. I'm going to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I pray for everyone. Every man, woman, boy, girl. Here in this sanctuary. In a hollow church. Across nations of the world. Who are saying, I want to be one of those given to make Prayer Fest 2024 happen. Lord, I pray two prayers for them. One, what they have proposed in their heart to give. Let them not have challenge in getting the money to give it. Let it come to them easily freely in the name of Jesus. Number two, I pray that the kind of blessing that you put on a man who carries your walk in their heart, let that blessing come upon each of them. Uh -huh. The Bible says that the blessings of God is a maker. Is a maker. Let the making hands of that blessing rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. Rest upon you now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, as I pray for those here, I pray for those in hollow, pray for those in their homes and in different parts of the world. Let it happen quickly. To the praise and glory of your name. In Jesus' precious name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen.